At the moment, I feel that everything around me is moving. Everything around me is alive. I can smell it, I can feel it, I can see it. That is something we hardly get if you live and work among six dead wolves. The house is really designed to embrace the environment. It's a magnifying glass for where you live. It's, it's just so crazy. We made that whole living experience so limited. 95% of the day, there's no life around you. You're living in between dead stuff. <sighs> Knowing what we know now about how trees emit signals and smells and actually connect to each other, but also to the animals and also to you as a person when you're forest bathing and like, Everything is constantly connected. So I always find it so strange that we think it's so strange why a lot of us get depressed. But it's not strange. It's because we're completely cut off. That's just how nature works, right? I mean, you have to be connected. I, I'm not sure if you can see the view I'm seeing, but this is just... I mean, this is what, what, it, what, what we designed it for. This is really like... Look how, how crazy beautiful that is. Of course, another way of doing this is taking a little mattress and a sleeping bag and getting out. It's also amazing, but sort of mentally what happens to you if that indoor space becomes an outdoor space is, is a completely different experience. When you're expecting a wall, when you're expecting everything here looks like it should be indoors, but it is outdoors. And that is, is sort of a mental trick which makes you aware of the environment in a, in a new way. I, I'm just going to close this because the wind is picking up, okay? You pull away the walls with your muscle power and your brain actually is tricked into believing that it has created all this. And that is, makes you extremely perceptive for it. The whole goal is that you start playing with all these layers related to the weather. So you use it as a natural way of controlling your climate inside. So this layer is 3000 kilos now. And it only works because we made this rails super low friction. And it's also like it's quite a slow weight for that reason. You, if you start pulling, it will have to slowly start basically and then once it's going it's actually very light it's like a it's like a ship you know like so you need a bit of momentum yeah moment exactly because it, to push you're basically pushing a car it's the weight of a car 3000 kilos that looks so easy though yeah 3000 kilos you did it with one hand right wow In this position is basically 30 square meters, which translates to 300 square feet, basically. So you have the, now the, the double layer of glass and the wooden, let's say the outer jacket is also closed. So you have a really like small and cozy space. Then we have a bed here. This bed also folds into the floor if you want to create more space. There's a bath here under the floor, which I can show you later. By literally opening up your house, you change your perspective of how we can live. How often do you think you'll have to move the house if you live in it? If you're like, let's say living in it full time, how often do you think you'd be doing this? I think you do it uh, on a daily basis, but not like, I, I think, uh, you, you, you move it uh, a couple of times a day, actually. So uh, it's not like you keep moving it all day, but like you wake up in the morning, you open it up, and then maybe uh, it starts raining, so you might close the glass again. Or like it's, it's, I mean, the idea is that you are in an active relationship with your environment. So the moment a cloud comes up and it starts raining, it, it sort of 
the idea that there's a catalyst for that movement. So you realize, ah, uh, now it's raining. So I, I, I mean, in the sense that normally you don't notice it's going to rain, you know, like when you're indoors. Right. You're always very aware of the weather, right? Because you see the clouds. If you look up. Exactly. It starts, the wind starts blowing. So, ah, ah, yeah, it's a bit chilly. Okay, I'll close this one. It's just constantly being aware of what, what is happening around you. I mean, now that the, if the weather is as nice as it is now, actually, it's not that much wind. This would be like this typical moment that you will also open up the glass. And then you make out of this indoor space, you make your, your outdoor space. And then you live and uh, live and sleep in the outdoors. And then the best part is to take a bath in the open sky. And the bath is here hidden in the floor. And I also need to show you here some details because these are things that we worked on. So for example, these panels. They overlap. So here, this panel will overlap over this steel element here. So it means when you walk over this panel, if there's any dirt, it's not going to fall in the bath, but it will fall into this little gap here. And also it's sort of your handle to lift it like this and then store it. We had a bath in the floor before with the previous cabins, but issue is that a bath is always wet. So if you close the bath then, it starts to mold. So what we did is we made these air gaps here. So there's always an air flow. But the moment you have air gaps here, you get two new problems because one is uh, dirt is going to come inside. And the other thing is water is going to come inside if you splash the water. So we solve the dirt with the water because if water splashes in here, it actually exits at the back. So all the water that comes here, leaves through the drain, and the water that goes inside of these holes also arrives in the drain. And the bath is standard. See, it works. Wow. So for three years, we had so many guests staying with us, that, and we received all the feedback. So we knew when things would break. We knew when things were uncomfortable. For example, the previous bath had a lid the lid was upright like this so when you would open the lid would be here and we just felt like the whole experience of being in the bath and then having a massive lid here is just not nice so we just want to get rid of these lids that in the previous model would would stick up right up here like like a big wall it's like we wanted to create experience when you're in the bath you really have this open view so when when you sit here like you just don't want to be disturbed by it, it's, it's really a matter of being like in this serene environment and you don't want to be disturbed by anything that can disturb you and so we didn't even want to have hinges here because hinges are also sort of in your view they, 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 they disturb your serenity somehow so that's why we decided you take away the lids then you put them put them in here and then when you take the bath you can just enjoy your environment yeah, so th this is basically, yeah, you can even with your partner when you're in the bath, you can play some cards here or you have the breakfast or, you, yeah. I mean, it's if very, you... I mean, you don't see this kind of thing, but you do see a bit of that in Japanese architecture, no? Is that inspired by, by going under into the ground? Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 I love that. Like, that's also the Japanese use the floor basically as everything happens on the floor. And you sit on the floor and you eat on the floor and you relax on the floor. So I like the connection with the floor, with everything. You, you want to be connected to the base. Yeah. And why not take advantage of that space? Exactly. Yeah. 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 These are hinges from both. So many of the details are actually also inspired on both. And both are very uh, smart with space. So it always needs to be compact, but also very high quality, very durable. Like you're out in the sea, there's, there's salt, there's sun, there's wind. So we want to make something very robust. But then also, I, I really like to see it as a land boat.
this is basically a boat. You, it's a place to be one with the elements. I did a master's degree in physics and I worked for a technology company. But I always had this love for architecture. And every year that I was studying physics, I was like, uh, I still had this urge to actually do something with architecture. So I wanted to jump to architecture. At some point, I was talking to my mother and she said I was thinking of buying this prefab, little prefab house for my uh, land in the forest. And then I th thought, okay, this may be a, an amazing opportunity. So I said, okay, what's your budget? Why don't you hand over the budget to me and I'll design it. The first cabin I built for my mother, I did everything alone, except for I have three older brothers who would sometimes take a day off and help me. My mother said she wanted to have like a little house in the backyard just for sort of as a hobby space to, she's working on, on a book. She also, want to sleep under the stars. So have you slept out here then with, with the open? Uh, f f to start. Yeah, um, but it gets cold, yeah. 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 Since we saw that first version in your mom's backyard, you've done a few more prototypes, right? After we met, I built another nine. Everyone is a little bit better. So you've been trying to make it more livable. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Because I really wanted to be a place where this can be your first house. This cabin is fully off the grid at the moment. So it, it functions with the, the boiler is connected to the wood stove. So you heat in the winter your water with fire. And in the summer, your water is heated with solar energy. And we have, of course, we have a battery to also store the energy. Let me show you the kitchen. So we have a refrigerator here. We have the gas stove, which can also be electric if you want. You have your sink. It's small, but we try to be smart with space for all your cutlery and all this kind of stuff. And then we have here a bigger uh, storage space which just to save up more space is that you can actually remove this table and put it in here and actually in the we're working on a new model where you can also put the chairs away in the closet you can put all sorts of stuff here you have your mirror and just store it away that's like a closet yeah okay. it's like a closet and then here we have the heating system because we're still heating the, the water with the stove now constantly. At some point the boiler is overheating and then it's going to blow the excess heat into the kitchen. It's also a safety thing also. It's a way to spread the heat more evenly, but it's also for safety that it doesn't blow up on that side. And then here we have shower. It's actually completely clad in stainless steel. But then the stainless steel we clad in a Koya wood. So actually the experience of having a shower, yeah, it's very cozy. You're really embraced by the wood here. And then with the new model we have here, instead of glass, we have a second door and then an outdoor shower. And then this toilet is actually the same style as the shower, also clad in stainless steel, which is also important to clean, you know, like you can just take a bucket of water and throw it in here and the whole floor is clean. It, it, it's like the, we wanted to, the attention should go to the environment, not to the cabins. Yeah, so the last space I need to show you is up there, which we have a second bed. So it can sleep four? Yeah, it can sleep four, which normally would be like a family, but it could also sleep four adults. So up here is the mezzanine uh, bedroom space. So we have the same, actually the same size bed as downstairs. So this could also be the, the main bedroom basically. And we finished it with these little bedside tables. And is it plywood? Yeah, this is birch ply. And again, finished with the Koya wood. And here we have a quite a 
well, a relatively big window also with a mosquito net. And up here, this is actually an, an, uh, a vent, mechanical vent, to blow in cool air, if you want. This is now all double glazing, even for Canada, or like it's, it complies with the regulations for, for a house, for a building. So is it, that's a good question, like is it insulated enough to be in, in Canada or in a cold yeah. environment? Yeah. One thing, I, there's always little small things that you're most proud of that you designed with the team. We have this special rails that has a, what we call a, a wind labyrinth inside. So actually this rail piece is going into the floor. So if wind arrives here, it it has to go through a labyrinth so it will be slowed down so much that there's zero airflow in inside of the building despite the fact that it's not fully connected i mean it's rolling of course so it's, it's a loose connection but for this reason we don't have any airflow into the into the main space there's other things for airflow for example we have everywhere these rubbers or these kind of brushes. So when you close the cabin, these kind of brushes make sure it's, it's always sealed. And we have these brushes everywhere. And I need to show you one, one, one really, ex the, the best brush, brush we have is actually under the door. We have to show it when everything is closed. So like this, this is like the 50 or the 500 uh, square feet floor now. Oh, so interesting. Like it's big, but it's closed. So you've somehow changed and put window over the deck. Yeah, we swapped the glass layer with the wooden layer. And now it's like one big enclosed space. Now that we also insulated this, it's if you have guests over or or if you want to put a big table or your husband is doing yoga here in the morning, then you can still stay, stay there and chill and then they can use this space. If it's raining, like obviously, because otherwise you can just go outside. So this terrace was before was outdoor terrace, now it's indoor terrace. And the trick is also in this floor. One thing we did is, so you see these holes here? These, yeah. This to let the rain through. So if it's outdoor terrace, you want to get rid of the rain. But we have put a second layer underneath, which is basically a second roof that's insulated. So if you'll feel here, there's no airflow coming inside. So the water goes out, but the wind doesn't come in. And then we close this glass layer again. And then you'll see what, what that brush does. So this is the trick. Now you see light coming through. So that means there's also, if there's light, it's open. There's also airflow. So if you close this door. Oh, there's no longer light. See, and but now, now the best thing. This handle is the brake system. So it's, based, it's, it's inspired on Dutch, Dutch bikes when you have the hand brakes. But this does the opposite. The moment you squeeze this, it actually lets go of the rails and then you can start sliding. But now you should look again at the slit here. So the moment I squeeze this, show that. Oh yeah, you see the light. Do you see it? Wow. <laughs> the light comes back. So this brush is pushing against the floor to prevent airflow. But the moment I want to start sliding this cabin, you don't want the friction of that brush. So it needs to come up. See? So th that's what this, this one releases the brake, but also lifts the brush there. It has brushes everywhere, all around, under the rails, under this wall, like everywhere where there's an air gap, there's a brush. Everything here is handwork. It's slow, they, they, like you need to use your body to move everything around in the cabin. So you, that's also a way to you interact with the cabin and through the cabin you interact with the outdoors. 
it's almost like it becomes a ritual, you know? Like, I, I love these Japanese rituals where if, you, if you're about to take a bath, the first thing is going to be one by one, you're going to open the bath. Uh, well, actually, there's one step before that, because first, you're going to heat up the stove here for about two or three hours to heat your bath water. And then the water is hot and you will open up the bath. It's really like, like making tea. You sometimes have these fast cookers to make tea. I mean, it's great, but it also sort of ruins the whole tradition and the moment of having tea, you know? You want to think about tea. It's all slowing you down. It's all preparing you to enjoy actually the tea to bring you back in the moment, right? Same with the bed. The bed can also be lower in the floor. So I'm not saying you have to take out the bed every morning. You can also leave it like this. But the act of preparing your bed before you go to bed is to bring you back in the moment. Then the next step is that you take off the backboard. You put it on the bed. It's the same like cooking. If you're going to cook, ordering food is great. But for your brain and your body, it's not that great. So you put it in the middle because that backboard has actually a double function. Now it becomes your central beam that's actually gonna hold the floor panels. Yeah, so this is the part which we made four times faster now. It's like taking down the sail on your boat. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Ordering food, it might be convenient, but you want to go to the shop, think about what you're going to make. It's all to slow you down. So what is it? What's the mechanism? It's a spindle system. I'm retracting four legs at the same time. And in the legs are spindles and they're going down now. And this spindle system, uh, it's really like what you just said. Like it's also <laughs> sort of like taking the sails of the ship down. So now you see that the backboard is slowly coming into position and it has a new function now because it's actually the beam that's carrying the floor panels. So now actually we have the next step. You can take out the floor panels. I know life doesn't always work like that, also not for me, but when you're here, when you're in this house, we try to make it work that way. See how the backboard is now carrying actually the floor? Everything here is handwork. That's also a way to you interact with the cabin. Like normally, all day we're in our brain, and this, this, this place to get out of your brain and to become literally you literally become one with your environment and the cabin and yourself in the end and then we created space here because there were the floor panels inside before so this is basically now where you put your blankets and actually doing the physical work yourself is important yeah it's super important that you're moving that there's no button that moves the walls no no exactly and and uh, this is actually something I intuitively never wanted that. And now I met this neuroscientist, Margit Sitzkorn, and she actually started to explain what happens in your brain, why that is important. And the pillows go here. Always make this mistake. For example, if you open up the cabin with your body, with your muscle power, then your brain, from the brain's perspective it seems like you're creating the outdoors and if your brain thinks it's creating the outdoors it's a complete it's a much stronger experience than when you're just exiting your a building through the through, through an ordinary door so that, that act opens your mind up to actually connect to the environment. So now you have one big open space, which even sounds different as you can hear. So you can put a long dining table, 
You can invite friends for a party. You can organize some kind of group event. You just have the space for your use. In this case, also the vision was like the floor is sort of your suitcase. So all you need, you store in the floor. Your clothing, your bath, your bed. And then if you go out in nature with your suitcase and an umbrella, you're basically fine, you know? I basically wanted to build a cabin that's also alive with almost like living walls. The way I see Anna is that it's, it's, it becomes sort of an organism. It becomes part of nature. Because you can start moving about the shells based on your mood, based on the occasion, but also based on the weather, it means like you're sort of projecting yourself on the cabin because I will use the cabin the way I need it to be in that moment.